Hey, welcome back. Mike Burris here with spiritmusicmeetups.org. Great website for learning how to play music, not just from your might and power skill, but learning how to have it revealed to you through anointed, prophetic, and spontaneous music, going beyond uh, improvisation. Anyway, I wanted to share with you Again, some real. I just look forward to this time more than anything, to uh, relay to you what you know God is revealing to me for the last day or two days it takes to do one of these, and I try to keep it to 22 minutes. It's turning out to be 30 minutes, so I'm going to try to break this into three videos because you can see there's a lot of material here. We're learning rudiments because they are building blocks. Everything that this house is made out of is just blocks put together and some wood and some pieces. They're little individual pieces put together to create this wonderful house. Same thing with music. You're learning a vocabulary, training your hands so that, you know, as God moves you in the music, it can just happen. Your hands will just go with the flow as the thoughts come to you, just like I'm speaking to you, I'm not thinking about every single word. I, I sometimes have to when I fumble around. Anyway, let's get down to it. I call this fiddling, fiddling with flam paradiddles. It's called fiddling because I had a, a picture. A lot of times a picture is worth 10,000 words, not just 1,000 words. So watch and observe for pictures coming into your head as you're playing. I, uh, that's part of Revelation, is seeing, seeing in your mind's eye what is being revealed to you. So I saw a picture of Fiddlin' because my student and I were coming up with a name for this, and he couldn't come up with it. I struggled with it, and I just ask, seek, and knock, and it shall be given to you. So I said, okay, what do I, and I saw a picture. As soon as I asked, oh God, what do I put there? I saw a picture of a person playing a fiddle. And having so much fun, maybe Irish music, bluegrass music, but just having so much fun. So I said, okay, I'm going with fiddling, like a fiddle player. All right, so that's how Revelation works. And we're going to be talking about flam paradiddles. Well, you know, what is a paradiddle? A paradiddle, I hope you can see this. I'll have it all down in the description. If you can't see all this clearly, we'll break it down and we'll put it in the description. A paradiddle is right, left, that's a pair of singles, right, left, or left, right, and a diddle, okay, so it's double. So a paradiddle and a flam is adding a grace note, so we know that. So go look at some of the videos I have on flams under 22 PWG, that's my playlist for all this, 22 minutes playing with God. We're going to be like little children right now, having a great time. So I'm going to add a little grace note in front of that right hand. Pair up diddle. I like to say pair up diddle because that's where you would bring the left hand up. Up diddle. Now you're ready for the left side. Pair up diddle. Pair up diddle. Pair up diddle. And that's what we have here. We have a little tap. That's the grace note. So make sure you can do little taps with your fingers, just using your fingers, just using your fingers or your wrists. And then we're going to have a downstroke. Downs stay down. They're called control stroke strokes because you're going to stay down. All right. I don't edit my videos. Someone asked me about that. Don't you worry about making mistakes? No because life is about making mistakes. This whole trying to look just right, perfection, that's all image. Image is nothing. Yeah, in this world, image is something, right? But God looks at the heart. And also, we should understand that as little children, we're going to make mistakes. I'm going to make mistakes verbally, just trying to teach you this, thinking about what to say. But, you know, God picks us up. We're little children, and you need to be patient with yourself also. The Father is a loving Father, not a cruel Father. 
like some people think God is, but gentle. And when I've worked with a lot of kids, you know, 5,000 plus students, so a lot of the little, little kids, there's a whole great website uh, page out there on spiritmusicmeetups.org called The Least Among Us. And it's about being like a little child. And, and other things, you know, God is not beating up somebody who is mentally impaired. He's working with them. Okay, so what are we getting back to? So we got a downstroke and a little tap. Then we have an upstroke on the opposite. So I say up on the opposite. So we got up on the opposite. And then we have tap, tap. So it's down, up, tap, tap. Down, up, tap, tap. And there's a little tap there on the grade. Down, up, tap, tap. Down, up, tap, tap. Get up as soon as you can. Now, I, my student and I, uh, Elliot Monsky, we came up with a much better uh, way of describing these stroke types. I call this an HL. Starts up high, ends up low. All right, and the tap is just starts out low, starts, ends up low. So it's an LL. I didn't write that down. That's an LL. Then we have an upstroke, which is a LH, because it ends up high. So it's an LH. Now this is important because we actually have nine unique stroke types, not four like a lot of these people teach. Because there's unaccented flams and drags also, and you gotta account for the medium, right? Some going up only halfway. So now we have LL and an LL. So I wrote those down for you. And so we can look at that. Notice that you go up here in order to come down here. You go up here in order to come down here. Now, if you repeat this one side, you're going to have to go up here, in, in other words, to come down here. So now this becomes your upstroke, not this. So it would be down, tap, tap, up. Down, tap, tap, up. Down, tap, tap, up. So you got to decide based on whether you're going to repeat it or whether you're going to alternate it, where your upstroke is. This is the way to learn how to do this. You always figure out where your accents are and determine if that is a downstroke that stays down because the next time it plays is soft. So the next time it plays, the left hand plays, it's soft. So it must stay down. But if the next time it plays is loud, another accent, or a medium height, right, in the middle, then it's got to go back up after it comes down. And we call that a rebound stroke. So it's either going to go high, 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 or high, medium, high, medium. So that's where the H is, where this comes in, is much better way of designating what kind of rebound stroke. So once you determine whether this is a D or an HL or an HM, high ending up low or high ending up medium or high high, then you work backwards. You say, well, in order to go down, I must first go up. So work backwards to find out where your upstroke is. If you're repeating this, you work backwards. You figure out, ah, I got to go up here. In other words, in order to go down. See, I made a mistake with my words. But I'm not going to beat myself up, and you shouldn't either. You shouldn't beat me up. <laughs> you shouldn't beat yourself up. You just correct yourself and move on.
Same with your drumming. Don't throw your sticks across the room. Just stop. Think about what you got to do. Don't go, uh, 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 uh. Think about what you got to do. Back up and restart correctly and create that muscle memory. So we just talked about how to figure out where, what type of stroke that is, and then work backwards to find the ups. And then everything else will be a tap. Did you know that? That's easy. Everything else will be a tap. You don't have to figure out what that is, what it is. You're, you'll know it's a tap. All you have to figure out is what are the accents or the non-accented flams and drags, what kind of stroke that is. Non-accented flams and drags start medium, right? They start medium. Accented flams and drags start high. Okay, so that's what this is. Reverse flam tap. I don't know what I meant by that. Oh. A reverse flam tap. I don't know what that is. Right, right. Right, right. Tap flam. Maybe that maybe that's what it is. Okay. So let's move on to how are we going to count this thing. I think that's how you play rhythm is counting. So learning how to do this is not rhythm. There is a rhythm. There is rhythm there. But now we're going to actually get some counting so you can apply this to actually reading music. I always start out with quarter, quarter note counts. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Or whatever you kind of count. These are, could be eighth note counts, depending on the time signature. Two, three, four. But you're going to count it. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. See how I get that two right up? But you can always shift the counting. You don't have to start on one. You can start counting on two, three, four, one. So now this becomes the one. Huh. One. So you can go put your foot down. One, two, three, four, one, two, right? That's really weird. One, two, three, four, 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 one. So I'm trying to put my foot down on the one. That is about adding the feet. I like to add the feet on the one, wherever the one happens to be. You could shift it over even further and start three, four, one, two. So now the foot's going to stop, stomp there. One, two, no, three, right? Three, four, one, two. Three, four, one, two. Three, four, one, two. Three. So that's weird. So get used to putting... Uh, it on the count and then shifting the counts over. Now we can go to eighth notes. One and two and three and four. And one and two and three and four. And shifting it over. One and two and three and four and one. And so you get the accent on the offbeat. Right? Right on the offbeat. That's called syncopation. One and two and three and four and one. So now you get that syncopation. You could go to 16th notes. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Very good. And again, you can shuffle it. I'm sorry, you can shift it over and keep shifting it. Now, when I say shuffles, well, everything that is straight time, even, one and everything's nice and even. You can shuffle any of these. You can shuffle one, two, three, four. You just shift the two over closer to the three and shift the four closer over to the one. So it's just another way of counting. It's called shuffling or swinging it. One, so you go one, two, 
one, two, three, four, one, two, three. See, the two, three is close together. Four, one is close together. One, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, right? One, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, four. That's called a shuffle. It's more obvious when you do it eighth note shuffle, eighth note shuffle. One, now the and becomes an uh. And the and becomes an uh. So it's like one, ha, two, ha, three. It's like sneezing. One, ha, two. One, ha, two, ha, three, ha, four. Ha, one, ha, two, ha, three, ha, four, ha. So I'm bringing it up on the ha. One, ha, two, ha, three, ha, four, ha. You can do the same thing shuffling the 16 notes. That E just gets closer. I still call it an E. I call that a, uh, but I just move it closer. So it's one, E, N, a, uh, two, E, N, close together, a, uh, one, E, N, a, uh, two, E, N. So that's what shuffles are. You can even turn these into eighth note triplets. Right, one e a uh, two, there it is. One e a uh, two or e a uh, two e. One e a uh, two, one e a uh, two, three e a uh, four. I'm putting a little space after the two. We'll talk about rest in a minute. One e a uh, two, three e a uh, four. One e a uh, two, three e a uh, four. One e a uh, two e a uh, three e a uh, four e a uh, one e a uh, two e a uh, three e a uh, four e a. Uh. So now I'm just running them all together with no space at the end. 16th note triplets, one E, E, and a, uh, a. Uh. So there's six of them, 16th notes, sextuplets they call them. That's why I called it E, E when you shuffle. The E becomes the E. The A uh becomes another A. Uh. One E, E, and. Right, one e e and a uh, uh, two e e and a uh, a uh, three e e e. So it's one e e and a uh, two e e. So again, it kind of goes over the edge here. So don't worry about that. Now, why I say with one rest in the space is there was no rests here unless we put one at the end. But you can decide, here's the right, left, right, right. Here's the left, right, left, left. And you can decide to put one space in here between those two strokes of the same value as the notes. So, so we'd count it one, two is the space, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. But we could put the space in the three. One, two, three, four, five. Or we could move the space over. One, two, three, four, five. And finally, you can put the space at the end. So I'm just what I call shifting over one space. All right? But I could have two spaces on both sides. One, two, Three, four is the space, five, six. Now we're getting sixes. So these are every combination of two spaces, right? This is every combination of one space. But you get some really interesting rhythms this way. See how systematic, progressive this is? I kept moving forward, moving forward, wrapping it, and then... One and the first and the third right here, da 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 da, and then in here and in here. So I just did very systematic. But you could go back and make each one of these spaces actually two rests. So it would be one, two, three, four, five, six. So now we turn the fives into sixes. I hope this is not too confusing. What? happens when you do this is you create phrases because now the rests create a whole so we if we put up something here one and a rest 
we could think of this as one phrase, one, two, three, four, five. But I cannot count it one, two, one, two, three. One, two, one, two, three. One, two, one, two, three. So that's what we call phrasing, which is common way to break up counts, is by using spaces to create phrases. One, two, three, that's one phrase. One, two. One, two, three, one, two. So that's another phrase. One, two, three, four, that's one phrase. One. One, two, three, four, one. One, two, three, four, one. One, two, three, four, one, one. And then one, two, three, four, five is just one phrase. So I want you to see that's what I'm talking about here. So it really cool. Let's do this one, two, three, four. One, two. So you've got to rest on two, right? One, two, and then three, four, five. One, two, four, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. See, we go up on the three. One, two, three. So you might just have to tell yourself where you have to go up. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And so I could count it in phrasing. One, two, one, two, three. One, two, one, two, three. One, two, one, two, three. Two, one. Now I go up on the one. One, two, one, two, three. So however you want to count it, just think about where you have to go up. And what am I doing here in the, sh what I say, shuffle? One, two, three, four, five, six. When you put a space between, remember one, when you put a space in here, you're shoving that over. Putting a space in here, you're shoving that over. So this becomes a shuffle. Shuffle, shuffle. You're putting a space. So it's shuff, big space, right? Oh, there it is, two and five. Putting a space in here, sha, full, sha, putting a space in there, full. So it's learning how a two and a five is a shuffle. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, there's a space, three, four, they're jammed together, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So we're going to have to go to part two. Uh, so we talked about counting phrases, and we talked about counting differently in, other to how, in making it easier for you to play. So you don't have to stick with what I have. Invent. For instance, one and two and three and. Instead of counting one, two, three, four, five, six, I went, oh, I can just count it one, two, three, four, five, six. There's the two. Or I could count one and two and one and two and one and two and three. Is that right? One. One and two. Oh, we're, oh, it we're only works down here. One and two and three and. So I don't have to count it one, two, three, four, five, six. I can count it one and two and three and. One and two and three and. One and two and three and. One and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and. So you can change your counting to fit whatever works best for you. Boy, there's a lot of information here. So I went over. We're going to talk about all this other stuff in part two. Thank you for your patience. That's what you have to be as a little child. Patient with your teacher. <laughs> And patient with yourself when you make mistakes. 
All right? So we've talked about that in every single video. Don't beat yourself up. Just go, okay, now, what, what was I doing? Okay, think about it. Hmm. Okay, all right, all right. I'm thinking about it. All right, observe, be alert, watch, okay. And create muscle memory. Repeat the correct thing. Don't go impatient. Ah, oh, I got to get faster. Oh, I got to, oh, yeah, yeah. And you're just playing like crazy, trying to go fast, and then you're just making mistakes. And you're drilling in those mistakes. You're drilling them into your muscles even deeper and deeper. It's harder and harder to get rid of those mistakes if you're impatient with yourself. You got to be patient with yourself. Think about everything. Oh, I got to keep it slanted. I got to do that. Or I got to do that. And really think about what you're doing. And create muscle memory. And gradually speed it up. Okay? Gradually speed up. It's like turning a, a hose on, right, out in the dirt. If you turn the hose on really fast, it, the water's going to come blasting out of there, and it's just going to go everywhere. It's not going to stay where you want the water to go on the plant. It's just going to go everywhere. It's going to go out into the out into the driveway, but it's not going to go on the plant. It might wipe the plant out. You don't want that to happen. So turn the water on slow. Let the water sink into the ground, okay, and really do its job. Okay. Thank you very much. I'll see you on part two, which is coming up next. Hang in there. Bye-bye.